والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما أخرجنا من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمنا بنور الفهم وأنم علينا عظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قول أما بعد All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace be upon his beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I testify that there is no God except Allah Almighty and I testify that Muhammad is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our minds and hearts to the stories of those great men that Allah had chosen as messengers to the whole mankind. I ask Allah azza wa jal to open our hearts and minds to their stories and to give us that motive for us to take them as an example. And before I start, please from all the brothers and sisters, if you have your car that's blocking someone downstairs, blocking a driveway from the neighbors next to the mosque, please so we don't get distractions during the lesson for you to remove your car. And if you have a child, please keep your child next to you. As we started last week, last Monday, with a series of the stories of the prophets and the messengers of Allah. Those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, فَبُهُدَاهُمْ اِقْتَدِ With their guidance and path, follow them. So follow them. They are those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen to be the example and the role model for all mankind. And we started with the first prophet and messenger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent and the first human being that Allah had created, Adam alayhi salam. And before we spoke about Adam, we gave a brief on life before Adam. And the creation of this universe before Adam. And the creation of the Malaika before Adam. And thousands of years before Adam, the creation of the jinn. And how they lived on this earth. And then we spoke about Adam. And how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam. And we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from His powers and strength that if He wants something to happen, all Allah azza wa jal will do is say, Kun, fayakun, be and it happens. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to create Adam, all Allah azza wa jal will do is say, become Adam and Adam becomes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not do it this way. Allah azza wa jal created Adam gradually. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam in stages. And some scholars say, this is for us as mankind to understand and realize that everything in life comes gradually. Everything in life comes step by stages. Because this human being has this rush in them, they don't want things to be quick and rush into things. We want things to happen in one day and night. 
I want to be strong, so strong in one day and night. The one, one day's training at the gym. I want to be smart and so knowledgeable in one day's lesson. I want to be rich in one day's work. And I want to be this, all this in seconds. And this is the nature of the human being. The nature of the human being loves things to come to him so quick. Loves things to come to him so quick and things happen to him so quick. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that can do this within two letters, kun fayakun, will happen. And Allah azza wa jalla didn't do it that quick. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't do it all at once. When Allah can. But this is for us to understand that everything comes in love gradually. And we mentioned the story when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew the soul on Adam and then the soul came to his nose and he, and he sneezed and then the angels told him, say alhamdulillah. So Allah azza wa jal told him, yarhamuka rabbuk, may your Lord have mercy on you. And then when the soul came to his tummy, to his stomach, and he was standing in the paradise and he saw the fruits of the paradise, he started to desire those fruits. And before the soul reaching his feet, Adam wanted to jump and go and get those fruits. So Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ عَزُولَ The insan had been created in quick and rush. The Adam, before the soul reached to his feet, Adam wanted to take those fruits. For it's the nature of the human being. And as I mentioned, we look into how Allah created this human being. Allah created him gradually. When Allah can create him so quick, in a split of a second, in an order of kun fayakun, and Allah Azza wa didn't do it. So this is for us to learn and to understand. And then it was the evil shaitan, the enemy of this human being, that's been an enemy of this human being before the completion of this human being. Before Allah Azza wa Jal blew the soul in him. And Iblis had promised, Iblis had promised that if Allah Azza wa Jal lets him on this human being, he'll destroy him. He'll destroy this human being. And then it was that time that Adam lived in the paradise and that's where we stopped at last week. Adam alayhi salam, the first human being that Allah Azza wa had created and the grandfather of mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had created him in a massive gigantic structure. He was over 30 meters tall, some scholars say 60 meters tall, other scholars say even more than that. But now that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he was 60 arms length. And each arm's length, each arm length is 50 centimeters. So he was gigantic, he was so tall. You could say he's as tall as a high rise building. And he was 7 arms length wide. That's about 3 meters and a half, if not more. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and mankind had been decreasing their height ever since then. This is what the Prophet alayhi salatu wasallam said. Mankind had been decreasing their height ever since then. Now, we are as tall as what? 10% of what Adam used to be. We are 10% of the height of what Adam used to be. <coughs> And Adam alayhi salam was a righteous, God-fearing servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him live in the paradise. At that time, this world existed. This world existed, the heavens and the earth, and the trees and the oceans and the land, and the animals were there before Adam alayhi salam was created. And living alone in the paradise for a certain time, Adam started to get bored. And subhanallah, it's the nature of the human being that this human being needs to live with someone else. So after a certain time, 
Adam starts to get bored and lonely. And we call human being in Arabic, we call him insan. And that word insan derives from the uns. Uns means feeling comfortable with someone else. So the Arab scholars say, the, the, the name insan was named to that human being because he lives, he could only live with someone else. It's the nature of the human being. It's very hard and tough to live alone. And same thing with Adam alayhi salam. He felt very lonely and he felt very bored alone in the paradise. So one day Adam alayhi salam, he slept in the paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a human being that's a different gender than Adam from his right rib cage, Allah, from his left rib cage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took a bone from his right, left rib cage and Allah azza wa jal created from that bent bone, Allah azza wa jal created Hawa, a female human being. So after Adam alayhi salam woke up, he saw a human being but different to his character, different to his looking. So Adam alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salam, he asked her, what were you created for? She said, لِأَسْكُنَ إِلَيْكَ So I could live with you, to live with you in calm and peace. And then the angels saw this different human being next to Adam. So they asked him, oh Adam, who's this human being? It's a different gender, different looks. I hear the man is a bit tougher, rougher, but the woman is more smooth. So the angels asked Adam alayhi salam, who's this human being next to you? So Adam called her Hawa. And remember, last week when we said that Allah taught Adam all the names of everything. So it wasn't hard for Adam to name this human being. Allah Azza wa Jal gave the knowledge to Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam the names of everything. Anything that you point to Adam, what's this? We say, this is a that. This is a tree, this is a leaf, this is a sand, this is a dust, this is water, this is fish, this is an animal. All the names of everything. Including that human being that was created from Adam himself. So the angels told him, who's that? He said, that's Hawa. So they told him, why? He said, because she was created from a life thing. And Hawa derives from the word Hay. Hay means a life. And because she was created from Adam alayhi salam, Adam alayhi salam named her Hawa. And Hawa is the most beautiful woman that ever existed on the surface of this world. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about Sarah, the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she is the most beautiful woman in the world after Hawa. After Hawa. So Hawa was the most beautiful woman in this world. Adam alayhi salam now, he has a partner, he has a company, he has a friend, he has a wife, he has someone that he could live with, and that's Hawa. Living in the paradise, and no doubt the greatest place that someone can live in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told Adam, O Adam, uskun anta wa zawjuka al-jannah. O Adam, you and your wife live in the paradise. Fakula min haythu shi'tuma. Eat from anywhere in this paradise. It's all yours. Eat whatever you want, however you want, from wherever you want. But, وَلَا تَقْرَبَا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ But then go need this certain tree. There's one certain tree that's distinguished from all other trees. Allah Azza wa told Adam, eat from all trees in the paradise, from everything and from everywhere. Except that certain tree. Don't go near it. If you do, then Allah Azza wa Jalla told him, فَتَكُونَا مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ If you do, then you and your wife are from the oppressors. You are from the dhalimin. You've oppressed over yourself. 
And subhanallah, what's a hard thing about it? That's one tree out of millions of other beautiful trees. There's no need for it. But that was a test for Adam alayhi salam and for his wife. Shaitan was kicked out of the paradise. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him because of the challenge that he put. He put that challenge. He hates this human being. And he wants to prove that he is better than this human being. Because Allah Azza wa Jal ordered him and the rest of the angels to prostrate to Adam and refused. And the reason he refused is because he believes he's better than this human being. So now, Iblis la'natullahi alayhi, he wants to prove a point. This point that he's better than this human being. And he'll do anything to deceive him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal had also warned Adam alayhi salam from Iblis. He told him, he is an enemy to you and to your family. Don't go near him. This Iblis is an enemy. So Adam alayhi salam, he got the orders from Allah azza wa jal, clearly understood, living in the paradise, eating from everything and from everywhere, shaitan will come to Adam. Iblis la'natullahi alayhi will come to Adam. Oh Adam, why don't you eat from this tree? Adam will refuse, a'udhu billah. My Lord had ordered me not to go near it. Go away. And again and again, Iblis will try and attempt again and again and try and deceive Adam to eat from the tree. And Adam refused, A'udhu Billah, no way I'll eat from this tree. Allah had ordered me not to go near it. So Iblis realized that it's very hard to deceive Adam. So what did he do? He went to Hawa. He said, if I can't go straight to him, I'll go indirect to him. So I went to Hawa. And he started to tell Hawa, eat from it. So maybe Hawa didn't say, no, no, why? A'udhu billah, Allah Azza wa Jal told us not to eat from it. But later on once, twice, three times, and then Shaitan said, the only reason that Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't want you to eat from this tree is because if you eat from this tree, then you become from the close, close ones to Allah Azza wa Jal, and you'll live here forever. So he deceived them. Which way did he come to him? Through pleasing Allah. If you eat from this tree, you please Allah, not disobey Him. And that's how shaitan plays with Allah of the people strong in the iman. When shaitan wants to deceive you, he doesn't come straight to your face, especially if you're a strong Muslim. He tries to come indirect. If you are strong in your prayer and very firm in your prayer, shaitan doesn't come straight to you and say, stop praying. he come to you probably say, pray even more. Come and pray here, and come and pray there, come and see this, come and see this. Indirect way he'll take you out. And that's how shaitan has been working ever since then. So he came to Hawa and Adam and said, the only reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not let you eat from this tree, إِلَّا أَن تَكُونَ مَلَكَيْنِ أَوْ تَكُونَ مِنَ الْخَالِدِينَ Because if you eat from this tree, you'll either become from the righteous, the, from the strong and the highest righteous believers, and you live forever, or you become even angels. If you eat from this tree, you become angels. Sure, angels, yani, those who obey Allah and never disobey Him. And then he said, وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ He even <laughs> promised. He made a promise that I'm only a good, peaceful advisor. I'm just advising you. I'm just giving you a good advice that will please your Lord. So Hawa started to put pressure on Adam. Start to put pressure on Adam. Let's eat from this tree. And if we eat from this tree, we might end up being angels. And look at these angels that obey Allah, never disobey Him. If we eat from this tree, we'll guarantee that we live forever in this life. We live forever in this paradise. And putting the pressure on Adam, speaking to Adam, until the Adam alayhi salam accepted to eat from that tree. But what was the intention of Adam from eating that tree? Not to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal. He thought if he eats that tree, he'll please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Adam alayhi salam ate from that tree. And the second Adam alayhi salam ate from that tree, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
فبدت لهما سوءاتهما وطفقا يخصفان عليهما من ورق الجنة They were wearing clothes Adam and Hawa both wearing normal clothes The second they tasted from that tree their clothes dropped so they became naked and Adam alayhi salam and Hawa had a lot of shyness in them so what did they do? They start to grab from the leaves of the paradise to cover the private parts and Adam ran. So Allah called Adam and told him, Wa Adam, where are you running? Are you running away from me? He said, no Allah, because I am embarrassed from you. Some people, they think that khushu'a is to lean forward and to, that they, they call that humbleness. Uh, that, that this is, uh, I will call that kaifosis, not humbleness. That humbleness is in your heart, in your heart, not in your physical body. because I'm embarrassed from you. وَنَادَاهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا أَلَمْ أَنْهَكُمَا عَنْ تِلْكُمَا الشَّجَرَةِ Didn't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called them and said, Didn't know I forbid you from eating from this tree. وَأَقُلْ لَكُمَا إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمَا عَدُوٌ مُبِينًا Didn't I tell you that shaitan is a clear enemy to you? Didn't I forbid you from eating from this tree? And I told you, don't listen to this shaitan, he's an enemy. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal to Adam, wa allama Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fatalaqa Adam min rabbihi kalimat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Adam words, that are the words of repentance. Qala rabbana, inna zalamna anfusana faghfil lana. They said, oh Allah, we had oppressed over ourselves, so forgive us. Ya Allah, we had oppressed over ourselves, so forgive us. إِنَّا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَرْخِفِ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And if you would not forgive us and have mercy on us, we'll be from those who will be losers in this day. Who will be losers. Those who lost everything. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam the way of repentance. So Allah azza wa jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal ordered, ordered Adam and Hawa to descend down to this world. And that's the first journey of Adam and Hawa in this dunya, in this world. The first, the first one that tasted from the tree was Hawa. She's the first one, she's the first one that ate from it, and she encouraged Adam to eat from it. And after they tasted, from the second they tasted the tree, their clothes dropped and they became naked and they were running around in the paradise trying to cover themselves with the leaves with the leaves that could grab themselves to cover their private parts and when adam was running allah Azza called him are you running away from me he said yeah allah i'm running because i'm embarrassed i'm shy i'm shy especially from you and he felt that guilt he felt that guilt and they were descended to the to this world allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah Azza wa Jal as a, as a punishment for the disobedience, Allah Azza wa Jal descended Adam and Hawa into this dunya. Some scholars say if Adam and Hawa did not eat from, the, from that tree, the whole descendants of Adam would have been now in the paradise. There was no such thing people living in this dunya. Wallahu a'lam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better. Now we start a new era, a new journey. For Adam and Hawa in the, on this world. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descended Adam and Hawa, He descended them in two different places. Adam came down in India. And Hawa came down in Jeddah. Jeddah is in Saudi Arabia. When you go to Hajj, you always land in Jeddah, which is one hour away from Mecca. And Adam 
and Hawa were looking for each other until both they met each other in Arafat. And Arafat is that mountain, or it's a mountain with a, great, a big area, not just a mountain, a, a big uh, suburb or a big area, that it's an obligation and it's a ritual, it's a condition that for you has to be accepted, is to go on Arafat and stay there for at least a moment during the days of Hajj. And the scholars say the reason that was called Arafat is because Arafat means introducing one another. Because Adam and Hawa met each other at this place, so they were introduced to each other again. So they were introduced to each other again. Now, and Hawa and Adam lived and started a new life on this dunya. Adam alayhi salam, he came down, him and Hawa. And they both came down with clothes on. Not what people describe to be. They came down naked in this dunya and they were trying to cover themselves, whatever they see. No, they came down covered. And Adam and Hawa lived and started their lives and they started to live in the mountains. The first life started on the mountains, not on the flat surface. They were living in the mountains. And Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him. Allah azza wa jalla not only taught him the names of everything, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also taught him how to deal with life, how to turn on a fire, how to build a small shed, how to get water, all the simple technical things that you need to survive. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam. And from Adam and Hawa, the descendants of mankind started. From Hawa, she fell pregnant 20 times. Each pregnancy with twins. A boy and a girl. So from Adam direct, he had 40 children. And Adam alayhi salam lived on earth for 960 years. In that 960 years, Adam alayhi salam saw many of his descendants. At least six, seven and eight and nine of his grandchildren. That some of the Israeli narrations, as I mentioned to you last week, say that Adam met 400,000 of his children and descendants and grandchildren. Before he died, there was 400,000 of them. Allahu alam. And life started, ikhwani, in which Hawa will fall pregnant, and always when she falls pregnant, she falls pregnant in twins. And those twins always, a boy and a girl, a male and a female. Adam alayhi salam was a messenger, and in which he revealed all this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I mentioned to you last week, that all the prophets and messengers came with one religion called Islam, one belief, believing in Allah. But they had different shara'i'ah. Shara'i means when it comes to way of life, when it comes to ibadat, when it comes to some of the halal and haram, the prophets and the messengers, they differed in that. One of the things that's different within the sharia of Adam and different to our sharia, that you can't get married to your ancestor. You can't get married to another sister, even if she's from a different stomach. You can't get married to your stepsister. You can't even get married to your niece. You can't even get married to your auntie. It's haram in our sharia. But in Adam's sharia, there was nothing else except for brothers and sisters to get married. The only haram thing that was in sharia at Adam is this, the boy and the girl from the same tummy, from the same pregnancy can't get married to each other. So it's got to be the boy and the girl from a different pregnancy, from a different tummy. So if she fell pregnant with the first pregnancy with a male and a female, those male and female can't get married to each other. They must get married to a different male and female from a different stomach, from a different pregnancy. And that was the sharia of Adam alayhi salam. Now, the first pregnancy of Hawa, the first baby, the first boy she got was Qabil. And then, and Qabil had a sister. And then after a few other pregnancies, Hawa fell pregnant again and she got Habil with his sister. Now as I mentioned to you, 
Qabil can't get, can't get married to his sister that the both were uh, the, the both came out from the same tummy. Habil's uh, that his sister that came from the same pregnancy. She wasn't as good as looking as Qabil's sister that came from the same pregnancy. And Qabil was supposed to get married to Habil's sister, the one that came from the same pregnancy, from Habil's pregnancy. And Habil was supposed to get married to Qabil's sister, the one that she came in the same pregnancy as Qabil. But as I mentioned to you, Qabil wasn't satisfied because his sister, the one that came from the same pregnancy, was much better looking than the sister of Habil that came from the same pregnancy as Habil. So Qabil refused to marry off his sister to Habil and he held grudge and hatred against his brother Habil. Also, Qabil's nature was very tough and rough. Habil was more humble and lean. And Qabil was a farmer. Habil was a herdsman, a shepherdman, a shepherd. Also at the time of Adam alayhi salam, there was something called qurban, sacrifice. To sacrifice for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pleasing Allah azza wa jal. The way they used to sacrifice to please Allah is I get the best of things I have, like I'm a shepherd, I get the best of cattle, the best of sheaves, the best of cows, the best of camels, and I put it in a certain place. And if I'm a farmer, I get the best of crops, the best of plants, the best of fruits, and I put it in a certain place. And I leave that on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah accepts it, Allah azza wa jalla will send a thunder or a fire from the heaven that will take that sacrifice. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't accept it, Allah azza wa jalla will leave it where it is. So it was the day for the children of Adam to sacrifice. So Habil came with the best of stock that he has. And he sacrificed it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Qabil came with the worst stock that he has. The worst plants, the worst fruits, the worst vegetables. And he put them in the place of sacrifice. The next morning, Habil's sacrifice was accepted. And Qabil's sacrifice was rejected. <laughs> So this increased the hatred and the grudge of Qabil's heart against his own brother Habil. So the shaitan took advantage. Shuf shaitan See the shaitan has been working ever since then. So shaitan, Iblis, la'natullah alayhi, took advantage of these grudges and hatred towards his own brother. So he came to him and he said, the only solution is to kill him. And back then the children of Adam never experienced someone dying to kill someone. I don't know how, what's this killing. So Qabil went up to Habil and he told him, لَأَقْتُلَنَّكْ I'm going to kill you. So Habil was much more righteous than his brother Qabil. He said, لَإِنْ بَسَطْتَ إِلَيَّ يَدَكَ لِتَقْتُلَنِي مَا أَنَا بِبَاسِطٍ يَدِيَ إِلَيْكَ لِأَقْتُلَكَ لِأَقْتُلَكَ إِنِّي أَخَافُ اللَّهَ رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ if you withdraw, if you pull out your hands out to me to kill me, I would not do the same towards you because I fear Allah. You want to kill me? Then let your hands kill me. But I would not do the same to you because I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to take the sins, then you take the sins so you could be from the people of the hellfire and it's only the actions of the Dhalimin, the oppressors. One night when Habil was asleep, Qabil grabbed a massive rock and came and crushed his brother's head with the rock. And Habil was the first human being to be ever killed on the surface of this earth. The first human being ever to be killed on the surface on this earth. And the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, From that day to the day of judgment, every innocent life that's being killed, Qabil gets a portion of the sayyat. Qabil gets part of the sayyat 
because he is the first one to start it. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever starts a good hasana, then everyone that does this hasana after them, though this person that started will get their rewards. And whoever starts a sayyah, then every person after them, they will do the same sayyah, will get all this person that started will get the sayyah. The Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said, from that day to the day of judgment, every innocent love that's been killed, Qabil gets a part of the sayyah. Why? Because he is the first one to start this killing and murder. And Qabil feel guilty. I killed my own brother. I got deceived brainwashed by the shaitan and killed my own brother. And he looks at his brother, his brother's dead, bleeding. So what does he do? Leave him like that? So Qabil put Habil on his back and went. He doesn't know what to do. Never heard of someone being killed. Never heard of someone being dead. They don't know what to do with the dead body. So while Qabil is walking in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the desert, in the middle of the land, what does he do? confused what to do with his brother at that moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in front of Qabil two crows will come two crows will come two black crows will come one crow will kill the other one and then after that crow will kill the other one will dig up a hole and bury that crow and cover him with the dust so Qabil saw that he knew that's the way to do with his brother. So he dug up a hole and he buried his brother Habil in that hole. Subhanallah, Allah Azza wa Jal taught this person how to bury this dead person through a crow. And when, when, Qabil, when Qabil saw that, he said, Ya waylata a'ajastu anakuna mithla hadha al-ghurabi fa'awariya saw'ata akhi fa'asbaha min al-nadimin. He said, I'm taking this ghurab, this, this crow as an example. And then Allah said, فَأَصْبَحَ مِنَ النَّادِمِينَ I'll take him as an example, how to bury my brother. And then he became from the guilty ones, but did not repent. Qabil did not repent. And what did Qabil do after that? Qabil, he grabbed his sister and he ran away from Adam. He's too shy to face his father. He's too shy to face his father. His father is a prophet, a messenger, a righteous man. He's too shy to face his brother. So he grabbed his sister and he ran off and lived on the flat surface of the land. As I mentioned, people were living on the mountains. Qabil was the first human being to live on the flat surface of the land. Live on the deserts or live on the, in, in the forests or live on the flat surface. Usually they were living in the mountains. And then, Qabil, with his sister, start to produce kids. And then the descendants of Qabil started on one side, and Adam alayhi salam on the other side. And the fasad and the corruption start to spread from Qabil and his descendants. I will come back to that point. Coming back to the story, my brothers and sisters, that the first corruption and mischief and evil doing that existed on the surface of this earth, it was because of grudges and hatred. Grudges and hatred and pride, as the scholars say. Pride is the mother of all corruptions. I'm too big, too great, too strong for others. And that's what led to all the other corruptions. And that's why my brothers and sisters, be aware of pride. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had warned of such pride that the Prophet alayhi wa sallam said that no one with an atom weight of pride will enter the paradise. And Adam alayhi salam lived for 960 years. His original Adam alayhi salam's original life's length was a thousand years. But remember when we mentioned last week that when Allah azza wa jal wiped with his right on Adam's back, all the descendants of Adam appeared to the day of judgment. And Adam saw all of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
made a special nur, a special lighting to come from the forehead of the Prophet and the messengers that are from the descendants of Adam. So Adam saw even the prophets and the messengers and Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal made them recognizable so Adam knows who are the prophets and messengers in his lineage or in his descendants. <coughs> From among those there was one, one man who had a very distinguished light. So Adam asked, oh Allah, who's that? So Allah Azza wa told him, that's one of your children and he's a messenger. He told him, what's his name? He said, Dawood. And then he said, oh Allah, and how long is he living for? He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he will be living for 60 years. So Adam said, oh Allah, that's a bit short. Would you give him 40 years of mine and make it 100? So Adam alayhi salam was supposed to live a thousand years, but he gave 40 years to Dawood alayhi salam. So Adam lived for 960 years. And when is that time for the angel of death to come and take the soul of Adam, knowing that Adam knew that he'll be living for a thousand years? When the angel of death came to take the soul of Adam, Adam was amazed. I've still got 40 years to live. So he told him, why are you coming to take my soul now? Oh, am I supposed to live for a thousand years? So the angel of death told him, did you forget the 40 years he gave Dawood? Did you forget the 40 years he gave Dawood? The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, Adam denied and forgot, and ever since then his descendants have been denying and forgetting. Ever since that day, his descendants have been denying and forgetting. Jahada wa jahadat durriyatu. As the Prophet alayhi wa said, he forgot and denied, and ever since that day, the descendants of Adam had been forgetting and denying. And when Adam... When, was on, when, he was, when Adam alayhi salam was on his deathbed, Adam had his children around him and he said, I desire fruits from the paradise. I desire fruits from the paradise. So his children didn't know much about the paradise or the land or the earth. So they went out looking for the fruits of the paradise. While they went out on their way, Strange men will appear to them. They were the angels. They were carrying shovels and carrying all the equipment of digging holes. And they were also covering, <coughs> carrying the shrouds of covering the dead, the white kafan. So they told them, the angels asked them, where are you going? So they said, we are going to collect fruits. We are going to get fruits from the paradise for our father. So the angels told them, go back, your father's life is coming to an end. So they went, and the angels came with them. When the angels entered the house, or the place where Adam salam was in, Hawa was sitting beside Adam. And Hawa, she was in the paradise, so she's got the experience of the angels. When she saw those strange men, she knew they were the angels. So she started to grab on Adam. She doesn't want to let go of him. So Adam said, Let me go, ilayki anni. I disobeyed Allah through you. I disobeyed Allah through you. For inni utitu min qibla. I, it came to me through you. Yani the way he's trying, yani what it was said, that I disobeyed Allah through you. Leave me alone. I disobeyed Allah through you. Leave me alone between myself and the angels of my Lord. Yani okay, we disobeyed Allah. Leave me alone. I don't want even my ending to come also disobeying Allah through you. Leave me alone. It came to me. I disobeyed. Yani the meaning of the what Adam said. In for inni It came. I went through you. Yani I came through you. Yani in other words, I disobeyed Allah through you. And then the angels, the angel of death, took the soul of Adam alayhi salam, and those angels went out. And in front of the descendants and the children of Adam alayhi salam, they were digging up a hole. And they made the lahid. The lahid is when you dig the hole, then you make in the corner of the hole another hole so it could be more protection for the dead. And then they got Adam. They washed Adam. They covered Adam with the shroud, with the kafan. And then they prayed on Adam. And then they carried Adam to the grave and buried Adam and put the sand up at the top of the grave 
And then they told the children of Adam, this is your way of burying your dead. So from that day, the children of Adam knew how to bury someone when they die. The children of Adam knew how to bury someone when they die. And then after the death of Adam, it was his son, Shaith. Shaith was the son of Adam, alayhi salam, in which took over the leadership of his father, and he was the second prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was the second prophet and messenger of Allah azza wa jal. Shaith means in Arabic, or means, Shaith means in Arabic, the gift of Allah. Shaith means the gift of Allah. When Adam alayhi salam lost Habil, and Adam loved Habil because of his righteousness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced Habil with Shaith. And Shaith was a righteous servant of Allah azza wa jal. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that Allah azza wa jal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed a hundred sahifa, a hundred a hundred, a hundred uh, sahifa means a hundred uh, orders of Allah Azza wa Jal or a hundred books of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and four sacred books. Fifty of that sahifa were given to Shaykh alayhi salam. And Shaykh start to order with justice and fairness in the mountains and spreading the good and the righteousness among the people that are living around the mountain. On the other hand, Qabil and his descendants were just spreading corruption and evilness. And they even were killing one another. And even the habit of their father was even increasing among them, killing each other and the haram spreading among each other. So you had the people living in the mountain, the people of the good, and the people of evilness living on the flat surface of the land. And life started to increase. And life started to increase. Shaith on one hand calling for the good and Qabil's descendants calling for the bad. And Qabil's descendants, their men were not as good looking as their women. And Shaith and his people, their women were not as good looking as their men. And from that door, shaitan played a big role to make the fitna in between. One of the orders of shaith among his people, he forbade them to mix with the people of Qabil. And shaitan had a big role into this, which one day shaitan described himself in a young man, and he started to work with one of the descendants of Qabil. And this shaitan coming in the disguise of a young man, he started to teach the son of Qabil, started to teach him the music <coughs> and blowing the flute. So the people of Qabil started to experience something new. And from that dancing started to happen and mixing started to take place. And when those two take place, then mixing with the other, the other gender takes place, and then the haram and the fahsha and the adultery and the fornication and the legal sex will start taking place. And from among the things that the people of Qabil start to do, is to start, they start to hold special festivals in which they get together, they play on the flute and play music and dance and mix. So the people of Shaykh start to hear of those festivals, some of them have weak hearts and iman. They start to come down and spy. They want to see what's happening. So one day, one of them went all the way in and started to mix with them. And he came back and he started to tell them about the good looking women that he saw around them. And then that's when the fahsha started to increase. When the people of Shaykh started to mix with the men of Shaykh, started to mix with the women of the Qabi's descendants, and the munkar increased. Until Idris alayhi salam came after Shaith, and Idris was the first prophet and messenger and man to declare jihad against corruption and evil doing. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who listen to him and act upon what they listen and hear, inshallah, ikhwani. Next week, with the story of Idris and the beginning of the story of Nuh. And ikhwani, as I mentioned, take them as an example, not just a story. 
Oh, wallah, we heard this story. It was a nice story and, you know, it's nice and uh, something that I look forward to listen to. But inshallah, something that I look forward to act upon. And I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to use us for which is best to, to serve this deen. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Allah mahdina wa hadibina wa jalna sababan liman hitada. Allah mahdi ummata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah maslah ummata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah maghfir li ummata Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah maghfir li muslimin wa muslimat wa mu'minin wa mu'minat al ahiyya minhum al ummat in naka rabbana qareeb wa mujeeb wa dawat. اللهم اتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب والأبصار صرف قلوبنا إلى طاعتك وفقنا لما تحب وترضى استخدمنا لدينك ورفع راية نبيك اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى نسألك من خير ما سألك منه عبدك ونبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم آمين